Hello and welcome back and today we're on to do some 10GBE video editing testing with the brand new Synology DS1621XS Plus. We've done speed testing, we've done Steam gaming tests, we've done um, a VM testing, we've done surveillance testing and now it is the turn of video editing on this device. Now this is a 10GBE enabled NAS, we are utilising this and the Sonic Solo Thunderbolt to 10GBE adapter which we're running into my gaming rig here, my gaming laptop and from here we're going to be using DaVinci Resolve. We're going to be doing a test utilising editing a bunch of video files, we're just going to make a very very quick project we're then going to time how long it takes the laptop with a single NVMe SSD inside to complete the action. And then we're going to replicate the same video editing process, but this time with all of the exact same files, not cached, but living on the NAS over 10 GBE. And we're going to see if they take exactly the same amount of time or if one is quicker than the other. So let's make our way to the screen where I'm going to explain the setup a little bit more and then go ahead and live edit a bunch of videos there for you and then show you just how long it's going to take. Let's make our way to the screen. So, one of the first things that probably hits you about this is the bit that there's probably a lot of background noise right now. I've got the fans on the laptop, this has got a dedicated GPU, and we have got both the fans of the NAS itself combined with the enterprise grade hard drives inside this NAS. If we make our way into the control panel, we can find out a lot more information about it. It is indeed the DS1621XS Plus. It's a four core Xeon based NAS. We've got eight gig of memory to play with. If we make our way into the storage manager, we can see that this has got six of those WD Ultrastar 10TB drives inside, Enterprise in design. I've not enabled caching. That's for another video where we're going to be looking at the difference between utilizing caching and not caching in video editing. But these six drives are in a RAID 6 environment. This particular RAID 6 as well is utilizing BTRFS in its volumes and we are utilizing encryption as well. So. This is a system where we're using the most fail-safe mode with encryption enabled all in the background. Now, throughout this video, I will have the resource monitor here on screen. This resource monitor, the only thing we care about, we're not going to look at the CPU or the memory, we're looking at just the network. We want to see how much network activity happens. As you can see, when I transferred the files over earlier, we saw a spike when I transferred the video files over to the NAS just before the start of this video. So that was that spike right there. On top of that, if we go into the network monitor here, so we go back into the control panel, and from there go into the network option, we can see in the network interfaces that we are connected via 10GBE right there. Uh, likewise, what we're utilizing uh, is this Windows PC, and if we go to the, not printers, sorry, click the wrong button there. If we go into the network connections, we can see the Solo 10G Thunderbolt 10G adapter, and if we go into a little bit further, we're able to see that it is indeed that connection that we're running on, right the way down to the IP. If we go to the status, we can get more information about it. And we can see all of that information there, the IP protocol there that we're on, and the IP protocol of that NAS. So, yes, we are connected on all of those bells and whistles. We're connected by 10GBE on that connection. There's all the data being sent and received. So, now you know that setup. We're also, throughout the course of this video, going to have the task manager open um, and try to keep it as visible as possible. And what we want to see is how much of the following is used. Firstly, we want to see that Ethernet connection during the Resolve um, video editing on the NAS. This will spike alarmingly, but disks D and C will be very small. C will occasionally get touched on because I am using screen recording software. So that will make a difference as it writes to the NVMe for the video that I'm recording that you're watching. But the video editing on the NAS should see the Ethernet doing all of the work. Um, the video editing I'm using is using the embedded graphics on the CPU, which leaves the GPU to hopefully handle all of the video editing. And finally, as we go through this, as mentioned, we are going to use DaVinci Resolve. So if we open up that program now, and we're going to do a completely fresh project. 
and this video editing is just going to be utilizing some of my back catalog of videos they're all either 1080p at 60 frames per second or 40k at 30 frames per second so we are going to be dealing with some big files you're probably hearing the fan there start to jump up a little bit as we're doing more activities uh, I'm just going to double check um, going ahead yep we're not going to be running on CDA mode so we'll be using OpenCL uh, which will mean we are using uh, the same graphics so we're going to go ahead and go for a new project we're just going to call it um, local test and it's going to be very straightforward indeed now as we go through this I am going to try to keep this window minimized like so this means that you should hopefully be able to make out at least some of the information all on the one screen. I can't create a smaller window with DaVinci than what you're seeing here. So let's go ahead and start adding media to our media pool on this device. So first thing we're going to utilize, we're not going to use the NAS for the first range of testing. We're just going to go straight into the C drive and we want to be able to find our footage that we're going to be utilizing so it will be on the desktop so we have to make our way into the user account area and find those files right so I've put forward a very quick project as you can see here it's only a few minutes long and it's effectively the 4k snippets of one of my cats and a camera on the sideline so again we can go ahead and click play and it will run there in the background it's all nice and straightforward and that's pretty much it on the local SSD it's got it running there hopefully the GPU software is going to do its job uh, we're just going to minimize that there to the side of the screen so we can get a good look at everything else running in the background let's go ahead and get the uh, manager up minimize the manager because we do want to be able to see a lot of these resources as and when they do kick in and remember we are running just at the moment the local ssd for this part of the testing so i've already gone ahead and saved it and called it local copy test and now we can make our way all the way through to the completion area here at the end. We're going to go ahead, save it inside the local uh, folder that it's already in, as you can see there. And then from there, we can go ahead, call it untitled. Scroll down, we're doing a 1080p file. We can add it to the rendering queue. It will carry, carry over. So let's replace it there from the test earlier on before I start this video. We got the test there and we can go ahead and start the rendering process while it does that I'll also have a clock on screen so we can go ahead and carry on with that and that's going to have that counter there at the top and what I'm going to do now is leave the screen recording there in the background completing our file to see how long it takes at the moment it's stipulating it's going to be around 12 to 13 minutes but it'll be interesting to see just how quick it is and remember this is utilizing 4k videos all of which are running together it's going to be a few minutes long and this is running on the local system so if we move that slightly across there you can see that all of the files we're using are inherently internal files and it's editing them all directly from the cache you can see where a lot of memory being utilized there and we can also see that we're using the embedded graphics not the graphics card so we can leave all that running there in the background and we'll keep an eye on the NAS to make sure that none of that data is utilized as well so let's fast forward to the completion of this test So our project is drawing to a close. We're at 99% now. I'm just going to get ready to click pause on this timer so we can see at the end just how long it's taken. And the job is completed. And as you can see, it's taken just over or just under, depending on which way you look at it, 14 minutes and 32 seconds. So we've got our job completed there. If we go into the uh, folder, so not the shared drive, if we head back, into my footage folder there 
go inside and we can find our completed file. So we can go ahead and click play. So what we're going to do now is we're going to click save. So we're going to make sure that everything we've done so far is saved. We want that blueprint at the bottom saved, certainly. Then we're going to exit the DaVinci program. And then we're going to delete all of these test files on our local machine. We're going to go ahead there. We're going to delete them from the main system. So they're all gone now. I'm going to bring that folder back. So as you can see, we've still got the completed file. As you can see, we're going to leave the completed file. and But we're actually going to remove it now and we'll move that onto the desktop, the completed file. And the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and reopen our video editing software. So we're going to go ahead and reopen DaVinci. Leaving that to open in the background. Remember, so we've deleted all of that test footage we had earlier. So the result now is going to be that it's going to ask us uh, where exactly that media has gone. And we're going to redirect this project towards... Let's get rid of that. We're going to redirect this project towards the NAS. As you'll see, it says it can't find all of the media files. So we're going to go ahead back into the Media Manager... And we're going to refind these files. And that new timeline will now fix itself because we've got all of our files back. We'll go back into the manager. It's exactly the same manager as before. Minimize that there. Put the NAS there. And what you're going to start to see is these spikes. These spikes here from the Synology side are going to be showing us about the difference now as this new process takes hold and this time we want to take a good long look at Ethernet utilization because you're going to see a change there. So now making our way back into the software once again it's exactly the same process we had before it's still all of those videos bouncing around Though I will say it does look like one of them has moved. So we're just going to go ahead and re... We're going to change the location of that file. Let's go into it there. Let's very quickly edit the positioning. It appears to have defaulted one of the positions of those files. edit the positioning of that one put that one back in the middle pop that one there but apart from that we've still got the same file for the same length and it cuts out part of the way through just like before so we're going to go ahead and save this file now we're going to give this one a different name i'm going to call this one 10g It's now saved. We'll go into the completion tab. As you can see, we're going to change the directory this time. This time, we are going to send it to the NAS. So, again, we could save it locally, but we're going to be utilizing both up and down of this process. We're going to call this one Untitled 2. Click Save. There's our directory. We've got a name. It's exactly the same as before. We're going to add it to the queue. We're going to get ready to start the rendering and get the clock started. One, two, three, starting rendering. So we'll add the clock, not that we need both. Now we're going to see that time difference between them. Is it going to be the same? Is it going to be shorter? Is it going to be longer? Let's find out. This is an NVMe SSD in our first testing versus this new NAS-based one. Now, things to bear in mind during the course of this. Firstly, bear in mind that we will be utilizing 
the embedded graphics still. We aren't utilizing caching and we're not utilizing the graphics card. This is just utilizing embedded graphics. And this time, all of the files that we're dealing with are on the network attached storage device. So you're gonna be seeing some impressive spikes along the way in terms of read and write. A lot of the data is still being cached, but the caching has been done already in the background. And what we wanna see is what is the difference between these two uh, versions of editing on the NAS and editing locally. In our next video, of course, I am gonna fast forward this in a second, we will be utilizing 4K pure files and we'll be editing on the NAS with another different editing software. If you've got any recommendation for software you wanna see used, do let me know in the comments. But otherwise, what we're gonna do now is fast forward to the completion of this part of the test. And now it is drawing to a close and as we can see the time it's taken is largely identical to that for the most part to that that we saw of using the localized NVMe. We're seeing a great deal more network traffic as I'm sure you can imagine but as you see the time is pretty much identical across both of them. Uh, we saw a memory utilization dip a tiniest bit but for the most part, it was exactly what we expected in this editing. So let's go ahead and just quickly click save there. Make sure the file has completed. Going to click save on that. And in our next tests, we will be looking at 4K utilizing the GPU. So again, as we see, it's completely empty there. We can go ahead and make our way into the network drive, go into video editing, minimize that window there. There's our untitled file from earlier on the one that we did on a local pc and there is untitled 2 the file we've just created so as we can see put them side by side both um, quite a large files they've both generated 11.9 gigabytes of data each so it has created quite a large file there if we go into details we can find out more information about it as you can see it's a big old file that we created on both of them that one's on the local that on the nas and there you have it. This has been our video editing uh, test of 1080p output. In our next video, as mentioned, we are going to be utilizing that NVIDIA GeForce graphics card this time. And when we do that, we will be outputting to 4K, both locally and then on the NAS. And I'm going to end things there. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Do stay tuned for more updates on this. We've still got the 1080p Steam testing follow-up video to do. That was... that it's live if not it will be soon and i'll just get ready now to line up for the 4k video editing test video thank you so much for watching click like if you enjoyed it click subscribe to learn more and i will see you next time